optic disc evaluation in glaucoma glaucoma is not just the increase in the intraocular pressure glaucoma is a chronic progressive optic neuropathy it is not just increase in intraocular pressure there is optic neuropathy which leads to morphological changes at the optic nerve head so optic nerve head is evaluation is very important there are changes in the retinal nerve fiber layer which leads to loss of retinal ganglion cells which further leads to loss of visual fields so the most important is optic nerve head the optic nerves can be examined by slit lamp by direct ophthalmoscope and by slit lamp uh, by bio microscopy with a handheld uh, plus 66 plus 78 or plus 90 diopter aspheric convex lens or ruby lens can be used or a contact lens gold main lens or indirect ophthalmoscopy may be done to examine the optic nerve head the pupil should be dilated prior to the examination and a comparison between the various methods of examination is necessary uh, clinical examination is supplemented by stereophotography of the optic nerve head because it serves as an objective record for documentation of the current clinical finding and also it is a tool for comparison in the future and also sometimes even captures details that are missed on clinical examination such as RNFL defects and splinter hemorrhages in the ocular hypertension treatment study, 84% of hemorrhages on the optic nerve head were detected on ONH photographs but were missed on clinical examination. Now the normal optic disc, uh, it appears as a vertically oval uh, structure with average dimension of uh, 1.92 mm vertically and uh, one point 76 mm horizontally and 2.69 mm square in surface area now in the posterior pole where the axons of the retinal ganglion cells and blood vessels converge to exit and enter respectively the scleral canal so in that area there is 2.69 mm square surface area the size of the optic nerve head is determined by the size of the scleral canal. Hence, high myopes have uh, typically have large scleral canals and large discs, while high hyperopes have small scleral canals and small discs. So these are small and large discs. Small discs less than 1.5 mm, large discs more than 2.2 mm. There is also inter-individual variability. In the middle of the optic disc there is optic cup. This optic cup appears as a horizontally oval pale depression centrally located on the optic nerve head and is devoid of neural and glial tissue. This optic cup is devoid of neural and glial tissue thereby exposing the lamina cribrosa. Physiologically larger discs have larger cups and smaller discs have smaller cups. Now how to identify the cup? The boundaries of the cup they are best determined by double bending of the circumlinear blood vessels at the cup edge here there is double bending the mere color is not necessary you should always look for the uh, bending of the blood vessels <coughs> the healthy neuroretinal rim this is neuroretinal rim between the boundary of the cup and the boundary of the optic nerve head it has a pinkish orange color typically follow the is not rule this is is not rule in this rule 
the, inf the inferior is the thickest i means inferior it is the thickest 18 percent thicker than the superior rim this is s s is superior so inferior is followed by superior then nasal then temporal this is a result of the peculiar arrangement of the rnfl exons of retinal ganglion cells so the inferior is the thickest exons for the from the larger temporal retina so this is temporal exons from the larger temporal retina they are organized into superior and inferior arcuate fibers by the horizontal rapi so exons from this larger temporal retina they are organized into superior and inferior arcuate fibers by the horizontal rapi and enter the disc at the superior and inferior poles respectively we are while the fibers from the smaller area of macula this is macula take a direct course via the papillomacular bundle and enters the optic nerve head temporally fibers from the nasal retina take a straight course entering the optic nerve head nasally the size of the disc is determined and shape of the optic disc by comparing it with the size of the slit beam the correction factor is then applied the correction factor for walk 60 diopter lens is 1 so if you are using walk lens then uh, multiply it by 1 and for 78 diopter multiply it by 1.1 for 90 diopter multiply it by 1.3 the average vertical diameter is 1.8 millimeter and the average horizontal diameter is 1.7 millimeter less than 1.5 they are considered small those more than 2.2 they uh, in vertical diameter they are considered large the scleral rings should not be included as a part of the optic disc area as this may falsely increase the size of the neuroretinal rim and decrease the cup to disc ratio. So this scleral ring uh, this should not be included as a part of the optic disc area. This is known as Elschnick scleral ring and <coughs> because this may falsely increase the size of the neuroretinal rim uh, or decrease the cup to disc ratio the neuroretinal rim size is determined by double bending of the vessels double bending of the vessels and look for paler and the is not rule apply the is not rule the cup to disc ratio is estimated by assigning a value of 1 to the disc in any meridian and proportionally estimating the cup size in the same meridian. An alternate method is to calculate the neuroretinal rim width in each sector and decimal relative to the optic disc size and then subtract from the 1. Only 2% of the population have a CD ratio greater than 0.7. In any individual, asymmetry of 0.2 or more between the eyes should also be regarded with suspicion. Though it is critical to exclude a corresponding difference in overall disc diameter. The large discs are believed to be more likely to sustain damage particularly in normal tension glaucoma this may be the result of the larger diameter conferring relative mechanical weakness and hence greater vulnerability to IOP induced displacement 
of the lamina cribrosa which has been found to be thinner in eyes with normal tension glaucoma asymmetry of the cup to disc ratio an asymmetry of more than 0.2 are equal to 0.2 uh, of both eyes in the presence of similar disc sizes should prompt further evaluation to rule out glaucoma optic disc hemorrhages disc hemorrhages are often extend from the neuro retinal rim onto the retina here you can see most commonly in fero temporally their presence is a risk factor for the development and progression of glaucoma they are more common in normal tension glaucoma but can also occur in healthy individuals as well as patient with systemic vascular disease when screening for glaucoma approximately 3 out of 4 people with a disc hemorrhage will not have glaucoma during screening bearing up circumlinear vessels bearing up circumlinear blood vessel is a sign of early thinning of the neuro retinal rim it is characterized by a space between the neuro retinal rim and a superficial blood vessel so this occur when there is erosion of the neuro retinal rim uh, which leave the blood vessel distant from the neural tissue bionetting is characterized by double angulation there is double angulation of a blood vessel with neuro retinal rim loss a vessel entering the disc from the retina may angle sharply backward end to the disc and then turn towards its original direction to run across the lamina cribrosa so this occurs when the thinning of the neuro retinal tissue reaches the disc margin then a sharp rim is produced so then when the blood vessel cross this sharp rim it will bend sharply at the edge of the disc and creating bionetting at the disc margin The laminar dot sign occurs in advancing glaucoma. Gray dot-like fenestrations in the lamina cribrosa become exposed as the neuro retinal rim recedes. The fenestrations sometimes appear linear, and this itself may be a sign of advanced damage, indicating distortion of the lamina. The dots may be seen in normal eyes. so this is known as lamellar dot sign so there is continuous deepening of the cup cause exposure of the underlying lamina cribrosa recognized as gray dots on the lamina an optic disc hemorrhage is a risk factor for the development and progression of glaucoma and can be missed unless magnification is used to examine the disc peripapillary changes peripapillary atrophy surrounding the optic nerve head may be a significance in glaucoma may be a sign of early damage in patients with ocular hypertension there is alpha zone which is the outer zone and this is alpha zone characterized by superficial retinal pigment epithelial changes tends to be larger and possibly more common in glaucomatous eyes this is beta zone inner zone characterized by corio retinal atrophy distinct from the scleral rim it is distinct from the scleral rim which is the white band of exposed sclera uh, to the beta zone the beta zone is larger and more common in glaucoma and as a risk factor for progression the location of the beta zone seems to indicate the orientation of likely visual field loss the retinal nerve fiber layer defects 
the in glaucoma the subtle rna fl defects they precede the development of the detectable optic disc and visual field changes their onset often follows disc hemorrhages two patterns occur localize which shape defects and diffuse defects that are larger and have indistinct borders defects are sometimes evident following disc hemorrhage red free green light uh, increases the contrast between the normal retina and defects on slit lamp biomicroscopy or fundus photography and typically makes identification easier OCT and scanning laser polarimetry are a highly effective meaning means of quantifying the RNA film. It should be noted that RNA film defects are not specific to glaucoma, can be seen in range of neurological disease as well as in apparently normal individuals. Retinal nerve fiber layer defects precede the development of optic disc and visual field changes in glaucoma. Focal ischemic discs are characterized by localized superior or inferior notching and are associated with localized field defects with early threat to fixation.